Uh, welcome to another Banner News interview. I am here with former DMAC women's head basketball coach Steve Crafterson, a.k.a. Coach K. Thank you. Coach, I just got a couple questions for you just kind of regarding your uh, recent news on retire. Are you a full, is it a full retirement from the school or is it just? It's full from full basketball and the, and the student activities. Okay. All right. So to start out with that, do you have any plans as far as with DMAC in the future or as far as like your retirement plans go, like what are you kind of looking forward to? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's kind of, it was an opportunity that presented itself that I couldn't turn it down. Mm -hmm. DMAC has a great policy, in my way anyway, of early retirement package. And I think when it's when you're 55 and or work 10 years at DMAC, you can get an early retirement package because you're starting to make more money, I guess, and they want you to make less, <laughs> uh, or the position to. And so this year was my last year of that option. Mm -hmm. If I would have stayed, it wouldn't be offered to me again. And it just, uh, I just thought, boy, I, my thought is going to be in a year or two, I was going to retire anyway. My thought was mm -hmm. uh, that, well, this is a pretty good in, uh, investment for me, and so we'll do that. Do you have any big like post retirement plans or any anywhere you want to go, anywhere you want to see? I have great ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife is ten years younger than I am and she's a special ed teacher in Boone. Okay. And so she's you know, we're we not gonna take off in October. Right. Or somewhere like that. Right. So uh, all three kids are still around this area in central Iowa, our children. And so I'll spend more time with them and maybe maybe trips I'd I'd I got some bucket list things that I'd like to do and see, uh, but I've been fortunate enough to all my other endeavors in my career in my life that nothing unbelievable. But I, I one that I'd like to that I always told every, I've told my wife about and everybody about. I'd like to go back uh, to Humboldt, California, uh, when I was when I was an assistant at University of North Dakota. Uh, we played out there at Humboldt State, and right outside the gym is the National Redwood Forest uh, Park, or whatever it's, whatever they call it, National Park, and it was it brought me to tears just to see how unbelievable minuscule <laughs> we mean <laughs> compared to these big old trees. And uh, so I'd like to go back there and share that experience with my wife or with the kids. And uh, but other than that. I think I'm going to play golf, but I know it won't be as much as I if I, as I should or can. Uh, but just kind of just getting away from the daily grind, right. I think is going to be a not really nice thing for for me to do. Getting out of that rut, um, you know, staying yeah. busy, staying occupied, all that. Yeah, hope so. That kind of stuff. So as far as your coaching, we'll talk a little bit more about that. This one's kind of a two-parter. So first, when did you when did you first start coaching? Like ever coaching basketball, and then what made you want to coach at DMAC? In, uh started in 1984 as an assistant at Lawrence College, maybe 83, 83, 84 might have been the first year. Uh, and I, 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 previous to that, I'd always said I never wanted to coach <laughs> because it was like I didn't want to be known as, well, all this former player can do is coach basketball, that's it. So I had two or three other jobs that I, that I did that weren't associated with basketball. And then the assistant job, I was living in Dubuque at the time, <clears throat> and assistant coach at Loris College came available. And it was like, well, it's not gonna hurt just for me to go talk to him. Right. And it worked out really well and got hired, took a $9,000 pay cut uh, from my previous job, and it was the best investment that I made. Um, and so that's how I first got, got into it and never thinking of where it would lead uh, just had no idea, and every and every time I thought I had an idea, it would change. Um, and and then the second part of the question is what? What did you say? It was uh, like so. Like what brought you here to DMAC? Oh, to DMAC. Well, I was the men's coach at Nyack, okay. and I was I just finished my eighth year there. And Or Solomon, the athletic director, who I knew very well, and uh, I was an assistant at Iowa State for eight years, mm -hmm. uh, and loved Ames and loved the area. Uh, in fact, my wife's first job out of college, I believe, after Glenwood was here in Boone. Mm -hmm. And so I knew about Boone and knew about, uh, we wanted to try to get back to Central Iowa. My wife is from a little town called Irwin, mm -hmm. uh, 45 minutes south of Carroll. Yep. And 
we had twins and a two and a half year old, and it was something like, well, if we could get closer to her family, that would be great. So they could have grandparents, would know them more and stuff. And and I made the the great quote of, how hard can it be to coach girls basketball? <laughs> and uh, I was I was really spoiled the first year, and then the second year of all the recruits that we had gotten after the first year, it came back to, to bite me, but uh, that's okay, that's part of it, and, and that that's how I got into uh, being here. So what do you what do you think you're going to miss most about your coaching career as a whole and coaching here at DMAC specifically? Well, I think first you're, you're doing the interaction with the student athletes and with everybody around that, you know, college has a great way of making you feel young and maybe old at the same time, but you feed, you, you feed off that youth energy. You know, their first year coming to a college uh, and the sophomores, you know, you get a kick out of them thinking that they know everything because they're now second year people here. And, and I think it's just, you, you miss that journey with them. You miss the process of going to see them in high school, recruiting them, they say yes, getting them here to visit, getting them, they commit, sign, get in April 25th, we're gonna bring our, our freshmen to be coming in. Uh, you miss that process. You miss, this, you miss <clears throat> when they go from your senior them high school till then they graduate at DMAC. Uh, the journey definitely with them. Uh, games, I'm very, com the only time I'm really competitive is coaching. Yeah. So I'll miss that a little bit. It won't transfer to my golf game because it won't. <laughs> Uh, and who knows, I might help at the high school level or leaving, leaving that open, but not, never, I don't say never, but I don't think a job where I would have to move. Uh, we love it here, we raised our kids here in, in Mason City, and that's where we want it to be. So for, for now, that's, I think that's what we're going to do. So as far as your last game, you know, not only the last game of the season, last game of the career, all that, just kind of like take me through your emotions of that final game, like just everything that was going on. There was head. more emotion on Sunday with the play-in game with mm -hmm. Southwestern because I thought that's a game we could win or we could lose. Right. And I started really feeling emotional given my, my thinking it might be my last talk before I send them out there to go play and then halftime talk and because I went through all the emotions of okay I gotta get this ready this is my last game and then, oh shit we're gonna win <laughs> and you're, you know you're going through all of them and how you know thinking you're gonna have time to react and plan yourself and how you want to react and then I, I just finally I got it out of my head and just said Man, I can't think about this. I just I want to let's win and then let's go. And we won and just because I wanted to enjoy that moment so much. And then I then I saw who knew who we were gonna play next and I was like, well, then that'll probably be the probably be the end. Uh, and that was it was almost like okay, you know, because you, I know that's the day. And we're probably, unless we pull up the upsets of all the upsets. <laughs> and the girls, because I wanted it to be after the Southwestern game, because we had felt so good. Mm -hmm. Everything went so well. And it was such a great, joyous moment. And then it's like, okay, now I'll play Kirkwood. Oh, shoot. <laughs> and, and hopefully they'll think of us in the future and like that, mm -hmm. a statement. But uh, it was kind of surreal where... I didn't have much feeling on that game. I tried to be as objective and in the moment as, as could be. And then when people started, I, when you're in any business long enough, you get to know everybody or they get to know who you are. Uh, and like the athletic director, I recruited when I was at Loris College. Todd Rima, the baseball coach, he, I worked with him at NIAC. All different you know, people that come up to me and you go, wow, this is, Okay, this is really going to be it. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, Drew, can I like maybe have another year? <laughs> maybe, you know, and it doesn't, but I think it's, it. then you just look back in the, the long term, this is great, this is a situation where I could get Joss the job, mm -hmm. and she's more than qualified, you didn't need me to get the job, but but it was it was helped that it was so seamless. We didn't have to go through a national search and didn't have to do that. And they felt as good about her as I as I do. Uh, but 
not as jittery. When you kind of know it's coming, it was kind of, okay, well, screw it. Let's go play. Mm -hmm. And that's how I kind of viewed it a little bit. Yeah. All right, we'll kind of head away more to or more towards SAC now opposed yeah. to the whole coaching. So first, what was it that made you want to get involved in SAC and like the activities alongside that? Well, that's how the job went. Okay. Uh, not that I didn't wasn't so. Uh, so it was a natural fit. I love being in, in student services, mm -hmm. and for it to be student activities, wow. And I was told it was the second best job on campus, <laughs> and which is it's pretty true. I mean, you got to run it uh, and be the fun guy, mm -hmm. not be the hard ass guy. Right. Or, and so that was, a, a, and I really liked it. And to get the the students input uh, when we had a better schedule for face to face classes before the pandemic. We had it where I want to say every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, from there was no class at 12 o'clock, and so Wednesday we did Wild Wednesdays where we did a, a like a a mini contest, like a putt putt contest, or we had a pool table there for a long time, and we could play four ball tournament just you know in 45 minutes, right. and so that was a lot of fun. It's trying to make it a give it a four-year feel. Now it's harder and harder when we have less students that are here face-to-face. -face. And most of the, the athletes now, you should be able to get the athletes to participate in everything. Now it's like baseball is, is practicing for seven hours a day, you know, or softball's practicing for it. So I don't get them. They, run, they, they work hard with all their classes in the morning, then they better be ready for practice at 1.30 or 2 o'clock and uh, they got nothing. Uh, but it was, it was just something that, to get a feel, again, to be around the students again. Right. And it be a, I always liked it being a non-athletic situation. Right. Uh, where I got along with them and they go, whoa, they like me for Steve, not for Coach K. <laughs> and that's kind of a nice thing. And, and again, being the fun guy, being not the one that's going to come down and tell them they can't do this or can't do that. Right. Uh, but trying to get them what they want to do and what I thought was kind of fun stuff to do. Uh, do you have any idea who will be taking over in your place or no. any, any candidates you can bring to the table? No, I don't because I think that, is, and I don't even know if this is true, I had heard through the grapevine or through the rumor mill yeah. that it was, that the person was also going to be the head of, stu of uh, housing okay. and it was going to be a non-athletic person, which surprised me because these are jobs are hard to find and but I think they want a lot of the head coaches to be academic advisors now okay. and so Josh is already there so then coach Putz is already there I think maybe Nick if he stays baseball coach I think he'll be in admit, ad, advising yeah. uh, so I think they're looking at that way that uh, so no I don't have any 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 leads on on that, because I would have been asked. Right. <laughs> so no, I don't. All right. Um, I think that wraps it up for me. Are there any final, any final words of motivation? Any final, you know, words of advice? On words of advice, I'll just say what I, what I've, when I was started to be a head coach at Nyack, I came with blame no one, expect nothing, do something. Uh, and I, I didn't. Excuse me. I didn't come up with that. <laughs> right. No. Uh, I heard it from. Um, an actor, and I, I can see, oh God, it's terrible, I can see him. Uh, he's, uh, he was doing, a, he was doing a 1920s, I don't know if it was leather hel helmets or leather necks or, it wasn't George Clooney, but Russell Crowe okay. was in a football movie, an old football movie kind of thing. And he went and talked to um, the, head coach, the head football coach Lloyd Carr after uh, Bo Schembach re retired, uh, Lloyd Carr was the head coach of Michigan football. Michigan football is freaking huge. Right. And in his thing, it was blame no one, expect nothing, do something. And I think I think Bill Parcells may have started that too. But it was like that covers everything. Right. You know, well, I'm not getting enough time. Blame no one. You know, expect nothing. You know, someone said. What if I lend you five dollars, and if I do when I do that, I have no expectation of ever seeing that money. 
<laughs> and what a joy it's going to be when you come up to me and say, hey, Chris, hey, here's that $5 you lent me. Wow, that's, you know, it's a positive right. thing. Wow, oh, great. Not like I'm going to spend every now, every minute of the day going, God dang, when's he going to send me that $5 back? <laughs> uh, and do something. You know, if, if you, they're not throwing me the ball, we'll get offensive rebounds. Right. Do, you know, do something. And I think that no matter if it's athletics or not, that's always struck with me. And for the first thought, first few years, I would get it wrong. And sometimes I'd write it down so fast, blame somebody, expect everything, <laughs> no, that's not right. And move it around. So now, I've, as I've done it older and over now, now I kind of get the idea. Right. Well, Coach, thank you for coming over here to Banner and Thanks. letting us interview, letting us talk to you. It was a great talk, really interesting. And it's been a joy. Me. Yeah. It's been a joy. I, I love DMAC. I mean, I can't. 17 years, right. it blows your mind that, that, that that's actually that, that long. And, uh, and, and still, you know, like the, the retiring, you know, in your head when you get this age in the 60s, you don't think of you're in the 60s. You right. think of like, well, I'm about your age. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. and it's like, well, I could be your grandfather, dang near. And, <laughs> you know, I mean, so that's just, it's, it's the bizarre thing of looking in the, you know, you'll look right. in the mirror and go, who is that? You know, I used to have a lot more hair then, but it's just it's the, way, it's the way it goes. You know what they say, you're only as old as you feel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, then I'm quite young usually. Mentally, anyway. Good, Mentally. good. But thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate thank it. Thank you.